Now, if you're a fan of nature photography, you might want to start getting into macro photography, but one of the things holding you back could be the cost of buying a dedicated macro lens. Hi, I'm Paul from Photogenius, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you could do macro photography on a budget by using extension tubes. Now I don't actually own a macro lens. If I want to do macro photography, I usually visit my friends at Brisbane Camera Hire and I hire a macro lens. So I've been thinking about buying some extension tubes for a while. And I'm currently in the UK. I've been traveling around, seeing friends and family. And yesterday I was in a place called Guildford, beautiful place, steeped in history. So I visited the local camera shop and picked up some extension tubes. And these are made by a company called Kenko. Now, before we begin, I want to just say this video is not sponsored by anybody, Kenko or any camera shop. I purchased these myself. So in this video, we can put these to the test and I can show you how these can help you do macro photography on a budget. Now, what exactly is an extension tube? Well, an extension tube allows you to extend the focal length of your lens. This means there is a greater distance between the sensor and the lens elements. This increases the magnification and allows you to focus much closer to your subject, which is obviously ideal for macro photography. So let me show you first what you get inside the box. In the box, as well as the instructions, you get a set of three extension tubes, 12 millimeter, 20 millimeter, and 36 millimeter. In the box, the tubes are stacked together you can easily separate them using the levers. Unlike lenses, extension tubes contain no glass elements. They do, however, include the terminals required to allow the lens to communicate with the camera. So autofocus works as normal. To fit an extension tube couldn't be easier. Remove the lens from the camera, attach the extension tube, Reattach the lens to the extension tube and you are ready to shoot. Okay, so now you know what extension tubes are. We've looked at what's in the box. We know how to set them up. Let's get into the garden and put them to the test. So I'm out here in the back garden taking some photos and putting the extension tubes to the test. It's been a lovely sunny day today. The light levels are good and that's working in my favor because the more light I've got, the faster the shutter speed can be, which helps me eliminate any camera shake and blur. Focusing, autofocus can be a bit tricky when doing macro photography, so I've opted for manual focus and the camera mode I'm shooting in is aperture priority. I'll put all the details of the camera settings at the end of the video so you can check those out. Now, we're testing three extension tubes here. They're all giving good results, but the one I've settled on is the shorter 12 millimeter tube. And here's why. I've been taking pictures of flowers and in particular, bees that are buzzing around the flowers. Now, with the longer the extension tube, the closer you have to bring the camera to get focus. So if you're taking a picture of a flower, this is not really an issue because you can get nice and close. But if you're taking a picture of a bee, it is an issue because when you bring the camera in close, the bee flies away. So that's why I've settled on the shorter tube. But so far, I'm seeing good results from each. Now, you'll see some pictures featured in the video, but also if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post some extra macro photos. The something I need to mention is depth of field. When you're doing macro photography, your depth of field is tiny. Depth of field is the amount of um, focus or area that is in focus in your image. When you get really close with these tubes, you get about a millimeter or two of focus. So really quite tricky. Again, on a static object like a flower, that's not such an issue. But if you're doing a insect, or in my case, I was doing bees, and they move, it goes out of focus. So you have to keep on top of your focusing, or sometimes it's easier just to move the camera backwards and forwards. And I want to show you just how shallow the depth of field is uh, in some pictures that I shot earlier, just of a coin. This first image of a coin is taken with just the 50 millimeter prime lens set to f 1.8. The second image is the 50 millimeter lens plus the 12 millimeter extension tube. The third image 
is the 50 millimeter lens with the 20 millimeter extension tube. And the fourth image is the 36 millimeter tube attached to the 50 millimeter prime. Note that because the coin is at an angle to the camera, we get a very shallow depth of field. So only the middle of the coin is actually in focus. However, with the coin flat and parallel to the camera, we get more of the coin in focus. For this picture, the aperture is set to f 1.8. With the second image, we see more detail as we close the aperture down to f4. And with an aperture of f8, we see plenty of detail. So it's been a couple of weeks since I started recording this video. I started recording it when I was in the UK. I've been back in Australia now for two weeks, but I've been so busy catching up with emails, running courses and workshops here in Brisbane that I hadn't got around to wrapping it up. So here we are. Um, but the last couple of weeks have been great because it's also given me a, a, a bit longer to play with and test out the extension tubes. Um, macro photography has always been something I've been fascinated with, but something I haven't really explored to any great length. Um, but with these, I've been having lots and lots of fun. Um, I've been taking photos of flowers. I've been taking photos of insects, match heads, M&Ms that I stole from my daughter. Um, I even took an awesome photo of the grooves on a vinyl record. So the Kenko extension rings for me get a big thumbs up. Now these are the Canon extension rings, but you can also buy these for Nikon cameras and they also make them for the Sony cameras as well. So if you're interested in finding out more, I've sourced some really good deals and I'll put some links in the description below the video. I'll also be featuring some of my favorite shots on my Instagram, so make sure you check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned a bit about macro and in particular extension rings and what they can do. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel, and I hope to see you sometime again soon. See you later, bye. Yes.